my next guest was faced with carrying a lot of labels, a lot of labels that you and I have carried throughout our life, but it was an encounter with God at a nightclub that changed her life and changed her perspective. Welcome author and pastor, Alex Seeley. Thanks for joining us today, Alex. Thank you for having me. I absolutely enjoyed your book, Taylor Made. I'm so glad. Thank you for being honest and just going through some hard moments yeah. in your childhood. You start off sharing that your mom wasn't always um, wise with her words as a parent, yeah. to say it nicely. Yeah. She called you some pretty mean words. She called you stupid, yeah. told you that you were a mistake. Tell me about this. Yeah, I think sometimes as parents, we don't realize that our words hold such weight and power. And it's not like my mum was being intentionally mean. I think part of it was her culture. She grew up where, you know, you you <laughs> treat them mean, keep them keen kind mm. of thing. And, um, and I think with her, it was in jest, you know, her saying I, she didn't want four children. She only ever wanted two children. And so I'll never forget that day when the stories were going around about how we were all born and she was laughing and just saying, oh, you were the mistake, you're the accident that was never meant to happen. And, you know, of course she loved me. Of course she, you know, nurtured me and I was her, her daughter. But those words as a little girl, like to hear, hold on a minute, I, you didn't want me, so you're basically putting up with me. And it's amazing how I felt the enemy came right into mm. that little space to attach to a lie and say, yeah, they don't love you. They're putting up with you and and so i think because my mum was fractured because of dysfunction i don't think there's really any functional family on on earth i think we've all got our little cracks yeah, yeah. but because they weren't healed those areas actually break other people and so her words that were spoken over her life just became a pattern to speak that over our lives and mm -hmm. so it's 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 more damaging than we realize and that's why i needed to write the book so you're looking in the mirror and you just don't like who you see because of these yeah. words that were in entering into your identity. Yeah. And so paint a picture of how you saw yourself, Alex, in the mirror. Yeah, I, I did not like what I saw. I saw a big nose. I saw fuzzy black hair because I'm Italian and mm -hmm. this is straightened, you know. <laughs> and. Uh, I, I saw that I wasn't pretty enough. I, I wasn't like the little the beach girls that I went to school with. I, I saw all the things that I didn't have. And it wasn't, I think it was so internal that when I would look in the mirror, I mean, I don't, I can't even remember if I write this in the book, but I used to pull my hair yes. out from the root and uh, just speak over myself. You're ugly, mm -hmm. you're, you're horrible. Who would want to ever love you? You know, I was very, very introverted inside where in myself even though I put on this facade of exterior confidence but actually it was really really battling with really quite a lot of shame mm -hmm. and um, just insecurity it's horrible and that transpired in just speaking down to other people mm -hmm. as well that yeah. what you heard yep. from your parents you yep. then started to project on others yeah absolutely you know you become a mean girl yeah. I, now I teach my kids if there's a mean bully in your class they're hurting Mm. Uh, don't receive the words that they're saying because they're they say hurting. hurt people hurt people that's right yeah yeah and so you uh, try to attach yourself to people who are affirming to you yeah who show love to you and yeah. you tell a story of finding a boy a, a boyfriend and really attaching himself or, or yeah. you, you attaching yourself to him yeah but God finds you in the midst yeah. of all this tell me this amazing <laughs> story yeah I was dating this guy for three years and I knew in my heart of hearts it wasn't right yeah. but I was so starved for affection and love and this this guy loved me like he really really loved me and in a warped sense he, he loved me I, I knew it was dysfunctional but it, it was all I had I was so starved but, um, but every time I was with him, I just felt loved. Every time I was without him, I, I knew it was wrong. I was in this, this tension and I remember we were out one night and we were party kids and we would go nightclubbing and we would, or he would drink heavily, I wouldn't, but I, that, was, that was that trajectory every weekend. And so I knew I wasn't in the right place. I'd been brought up in church my whole life. Mm -hmm. I knew what was right and wrong. But it was this one particular night we're at this club and I, I'm just sitting there and I, I kid you not, it felt like an out of body experience. I was kind of just sitting at, at, at a table and it felt like everything went into slow motion. Mm. And I felt like I just began to see all the faces just hollow 
and dead. And it's like everyone was aimless. Mm -hmm. Everyone was slow. And I felt the Lord saying, what are you doing here? This is not what I have for you. If you think this is it, you don't know me. I've got a calling on your life and you've, you need to change. Like, I, I remember just being so arrested. Like, God just met me and I'm like, God, are you in this place? Yeah. Like, I thought you left me at the door. Yeah. But I just, I just got up and I just caught a cab home and I went home and I just had this moment with the Lord, a true encounter with Jesus. I said, Jesus, my life is a mess. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't like me. I, I, I feel like you're a liar. But I, I know you not to be a liar. Mm -hmm. You said that you would give life and life abundantly and my life is far from abundant. It is barren and it is twisted and it is dark. And, and he says, well, give me your whole heart because I don't want 50%, 90%, I want 100%. Let me be your Lord. I, I want to be your Lord and Saviour. And I remember just drawing that line in the sand, on my carpet, yeah. <laughs> and stepping over and never looked back. I was just about to turn 21 years of age and first thing I did, first order of business was the Lord says, I want your relationship. Mm -hmm. You to discard that. I want to be the only one to just heal you. And for four years I stayed single and I just allowed God to heal mm -hmm. the very deep, deepest parts of my heart. I was 21 when I gave my heart to the Lord, but I don't think it was till I was 31 mm -hmm. that I could say I was completely free yeah. of all the stuff. Because I had an eating disorder mm -hmm. in amongst all of this. I had so many lies that I'd partnered with that actually affected even how I ministered, how I loved, how I had relationships. So that, that journey of true freedom, I believe, took a good 10 years. Mm. There were pockets of beautiful moments and freedom, but to say completely free, breaking uh, patterns that are really unhealthy patterns, thought patterns, um, so many of those things, it took about 10 years. Did you ever talk to your parents about your eating disorder, about your, your self-esteem and all of those issues? No, no. Now I have, obviously, but not after the fact. Never, never during. It wasn't a, it wasn't a safe space to do that um, in the sense of I don't think it would have been received mm -hmm. and then there wouldn't, I think it would have been another form of rejection, so. So what did the conversation look like after the fact when you finally yeah, told your mom? I think it was, you know, after my healing, mm. I think over the years, you know, I was married now, I was a mum, and you know, in conversation, I'd just say, and my mum got a lot of healing. Mm. And so this is the beautiful redemption of this story is that my mum and I are just the best of friends now, mm. the best of friends. And um, unfortunately, my three siblings are still, um, estranged mm. in a way because I think they haven't allowed that that healing mm. to take place and I, and I get it because I think I'd be the same spot mm. if I didn't have Jesus um, but being able to just have that conversation and mum are you aware that because of this this happened and because of this this happened this actually was very damaging and so you know to be able to have that conversation and have your mum go I'm so so sorry it was never my intention you know that and I'm like absolutely I know that now yeah. But it's been beautiful to be able to unpack it and unravel it on the other side what, of freedom. How, what was it like to hear the words, I'm sorry, come from your mother's really lips? Really moving, really moving. Um, I remember though resolving that I may never hear that and I don't need that in order to feel free and, mm. forgi and forgive her. I felt like I had done the forgiving and the releasing way before she ever said, I'm sorry. And I think the I'm sorry was just a beautiful moment where I was like, I'm not crazy. I didn't make this up, you know? Because I think sometimes as a kid too, you're like, did that really happen? Yeah. Like, was I, did I, did I instigate that? Type of, it wasn't that bad. I think you always want to think the best of your family. And, and I think to hear my mum say, I'm really, really sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I have to live with certain decisions that I made as a, as a young mum and, I'm like, yeah, but mum, this is the, re and you know, for her to sign off and say, this book's gonna help change people's lives. I think she's my hero and I love her dearly and she's amazing. You eventually go to seminary. Now you're the pastor of Belonging Church yeah. here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about Belonging and why it was so important for you to yeah. come here to Nashville. Yeah, well, that was the whole crazy journey of like coming into this, I think it was about 30, 38, 39 when God was really, uh, showing us it's time to, to move to America and we're like America why America but uh, a lots of turn of events lots of confirmations had us land here in 2012 and we really didn't know what 
you know, was going to happen, what the future looked like. And I think we just opened our heart to go, okay, God, we're just going to follow your leading in whatever you, you do. My husband does music production and uh, mix engineering and all that sort of thing. And so he was able to work. But in that interim, I was like, God, what are you doing here? And we began to see um, a need. Like there were a lot of musicians, traveling musicians that just didn't have a home base on the weekends because they were always on a tour bus. And so I was like, who's pastoring these people? Who's looking after these people? And um, we just opened our home, they gathered. And before long, like within a year, we had over 120 people just packed in our basement. And uh, God really confirmed again, this is a church. And I was very hesitant to, to do a church because I'd just seen, you know, so much stuff over the years. And I thought, no, I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to be that leader. And um, God really said, don't worry about it. You just be the church I'm coming back for. You just obey me. Just love people. Just love them and let me let me change them. Mm. Uh, you just usher in a present. You know, let me come in and let me do what I need to do. And, and honestly, it's been beautiful. So it's been five years that we've officially launched and it's a beautiful body and we really love being here. And you're forgetting, 4,000 people grew from, I know. Uh, you know, a couple of people in your yeah. house to you now 4,000 people I go know. to this church. It's a, it's a real miracle and it's mm. a, don't take it for granted. It's beautiful. So now, Alex, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? Oh, I see, I see an awesome mm. person. I love who I am. I really do. I can genuinely say, I love you. You're beautiful. Mm. You're kind. You're powerful. You're smart. Mm. Um, you're a great mum, great wife, great friend and uh, very, very happy in my skin. Like I, I don't care about my nose anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I've just, I, I realized it was a shame. I remember one day going, I really ripped myself off all those years. Because every time someone would say, you're so beautiful, I'd be like, why are you mocking me? Why are you laughing at me? Like, why are you, why are you telling lies? But now I just know how to say thank you. Yeah. You know, where that, that was so hard for me to do. And so I realized that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, that God put this together, you know, and I'm not to, to, to punish it. Like, mm. it's... I'm healthy and I'm whole and it's the best feeling in the world. Oh, so. Thank you so much, Alex. Yeah. The name of the book is Taylor Made: Discover the Secret of Who God Created You to Be. Thanks yeah. again. And you know what Alex said is so true. It's in the Bible. It says in uh, Psalm 139, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Know that today. Know that God sees every part of you and loves you so deeply. Maybe you're a lot like myself or Alex, who in the past have looked at ourselves in the mirror and can pick apart every part of our bodies and ourselves that we didn't like, but God created you. And remember that you are tailor made by him. Call our prayer lines. If you need somebody just to encourage you today, remind you that Jesus loves you, maybe introduce Jesus to you for the first time, they'd love to do that. The phone number is at the bottom of the screen. Stay with us, we'll be right back.